thought I'd give a little shop tour here uh, for the guys at Rolling Hills in North Carolina. And so a little bandsaw there. That was gonna be a CNC mill project, a manual lathe. Got a little Bailey 33 ton press break. <clears throat> And then over here is the uh, laser. So we're working on that now. Been doing some cuttings you saw in the first video. And right now we've got a few leaks going with the uh, some of the air lines coming in from the air compressor and the T joint of, you know, for the nitrogen and all that. So just cleaning up a few leaks. And uh, over here, they at the same time they ordered the laser, they got this. So the Haas VF4 the SS version, the super speed version, also with the fourth axis rotary in there. And then right here is their uh, STV plasma table. I think they've been happy with that overall. Get a lot of guys asking me about plasma tables and which ones to get. I'm kind of partial to eh, Spark Robotic, Luke Sear, Sirius Metalworks and um, Star Lab, I think those are all good ones. And, but I've heard good things about this as well. It's pretty good, but I think one of the ways they save money is a very inexpensive construction, kind of a lightweight sheet metal frame. So you can see they got some one inch plate up there. I haven't taken a chance to introduce these guys yet, but this is Jonah that you're looking at right here working on a an air leak uh, fitting that we got to tighten up. And Jonah's dad is Wes, and you'll see him in there Much as well. Right. And uh, Wes, you know, kind of started and runs the gin uh, back in the 96, I think, or 98. And then Jonah's come along and kind of in charge of the fab shop business. And, of course, during gin season, they run it together. But anyway, and then that's Kyle right there as well. He's one of the – the uh, mechanics and guys running the uh you know primarily focused on the gin and maintaining it So this is smart thinking on their part. I think Wes wanted to have a way to, you know, while we were dialing in the machine, the material that we were cutting to dial in the machine was not actually going to waste. And these are some shims that we were cutting out of various thicknesses that a customer had asked for. So these are actually going to be going to a customer. So that was 11 gauge that we cut the first stack of shims out of. And then this is the same part right here. This is, I think this was 18 or 20 gauge. Don't remember which. But we're cutting 20 gauge shims uh, here in a minute. And uh, we were cutting those at 1,700 inches a minute. Uh, so you can see the thing zipping around there pretty good. Yeah, so one of the things that you're, you can do to figure out the compensation you need is make up a little go, no go template like this. So we engrave those markings on there. So here's our cutout, a little bit of hot rolled steel. So we got a 500 hole and a half inch drill bit. That's 495, 490, 488, 486, 484 goes. 
482 doesn't go. So 484, 483 thousandths, so 16, 17 thousandths is the exact dead on offset you need to get a perfect hole in this machine. So on an install like this, you know, we spend quite a bit of time dialing in materials, different thicknesses, different, you know, trying different nozzles. And sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. The windshield got us on that one. And So this is 14 gauge on compressed air. And it's a pretty nice cut, but you can see it's got just a very slight <clears throat> burr on it. All right, so this I think was 11 gauge on stainless. And I think this is the one that Jonah and I are pretty proud of. We had uh, maybe an hour or two into this one trying all kinds of stuff. And we were chasing after a little tiny burr and had some difficulties in it, but um, but got it going and we were also kind of uh, this kind of interesting thing that happens on the ninja group a lot you'll see these guys post stuff and i've seen this before you know where you'll have a sheet sort of oscillate by the way it's sitting and uh, you'll get a cut that looks wavy and you'll think oh my gosh what's wrong with this machine but you know it's just your sheet moving in the slats a little bit So this is a sheet of three quarter inch that you see getting loaded up here. And three quarter inch is the max for this machine, which is a 3000 watt machine. So uh, Ori gives you some, a few parameters, starting parameters. It's kind of unique. Most of the manufacturers don't come with any, but you will get a few and they may be sort of pretty close or may not be. Um, and we just happened to get lucky and have some starting parameters for three quarter inch. And they were like, nearly dead on on the first cut close enough to only cut one sample part out of so uh you can see that cutting out here you can see that this machine 3000 watts cutting three quarter inch at its very very max i think that was 24 inches a minute right there so really slow but i mean for what it is it actually produced a very nice result and you will see that thing swinging out doing a ring cut my buddy Chris Dudley is the one that turned me on to that. I knew about the ring cut, but never used it. I was like, ah, you don't need that. And uh, it actually works pretty good to help you get uh, square corners, at least as square as you can get for a given material. So that is what you can get on three quarter inch with 3000 watts. That's about as good as it gets right there. So I was there for four days, and while I was there, man, they already had orders coming in for stuff. So they had gotten an order in to get 200 of these little things made, and it's, it's a master link for some kind of a tiny chain. And um, it was going to be cutting out of 090 stainless, so we were didn't ha have the 090 stainless, but we were trying to just you know get a feel for it. And those are 078 holes, and I don't remember the overall size of it, but it cut pretty nice. It was going to need a little bit of tumbling. If you're new to lasers, you can get really beautiful burr-free cuts with most materials and most shape sizes. But when you get down to like super, super tiny stuff in thicker material, let's say thicker than 18 gauge, you will get, uh, you know, a little bit of burr on there that you got to deal with. So, all right, that wraps up my week in North Carolina and, uh, 
you know, when I'm talking to guys about buying a laser, I'm pretty picky about who I will sell to. And uh, not everybody is a great fit to buy a machine from me. And really what I'm looking for is a business partnership, a friendship, you know, someone that values and appreciates what I do so that, you know, we can have the best chance at being successful together down the road. And these guys certainly were that, you know, it's, you know, when you get there, you immediately feel like a friend, you immediately feel like a family member. And that's how I felt when I was there. They treated me great. And hopefully they feel like they got the right value for me out of this. And I think they did. So if you're interested in a laser, send me an email to the address on the screen.